This is Coach Troy with Tate Fitness, and today I want to talk about Rad 140. So we're going back to some SARMs here. Uh, Rad 140, also known as Testalone. So what is Rad 140? Well, Rad 140 is an investigational SARM, which a SARM is a selective androgen receptor modulator, and it was invented by Radius Health. This SARM showed a high affinity to the androgen receptor for the binding affinity and a fairly highly anabolic threshold and low androgenic threshold, which is what all SARMs are basically trying to accomplish, especially this uh, SARM in particular. So high tissue selective anabolic effects on muscle tissue and bone and low effects on prostate. RAD 140 also showed promises of high oral bioavailability and tolerability. Now the hopes of RAD 140 was for replacement for HRT or TRT, I should say specifically, for testosterone replacement therapy. They were trying to come out with RAD 140 as a replacement for that. So the threshold of androgenic components that testosterone normally carries through its pharmacokinetic issues, they're trying to use the RAD 140 for a lowering of the androgen levels and just raising of the anabolic properties in hopes for men, women, and children to be a viable candidate to actually use this compound. It also showed neuroprotective androgen-like benefits in the brain with relative lack in the prostate and seminal vesicles. So, you know, in preclinical trials, the RAD140 looked very promising as far as its efficacy goes in being tissue selective to muscle and bone with a relatively low androgen load. So RAD140 basically works on two mechanisms of action. The first one is systemic uh, total androgen suppression, and the second one would be high binding infinity for androgen activation. And it basically suppresses the HPTA, which is the hypothalamus pituitary testicular axis for testosterone levels, and um, basically decreases DHT, which is the 5-alpha reductus of testosterone into dihydrotestosterone. Both of those are suppressed because this SARM, and all SARMs included, uh, they don't aromatize and go into that 5-alpha reductus um, system. They're basically, and I wouldn't say they're already 5-alpha reduced, because they're, they're not really purely an anabolic per se, but they have high binding affinity to the androgen receptor, making it a highly affinity for, towards tissue selectivity of anabolic properties, which does subsequently lowers endogenous androgen levels uh, through the endocrine system of the body. Now, readings and studies have shown that RAD140 has an anabolic to androgenic ratio of 90 to 1. Not fully elucidated yet, so I don't know if that statistic is completely accurate. And I can't find these studies per se, because there's no scientific data to back it up, that it's got a 20-hour half-life, which again, it's not fully elucidated where they came up with this 20-hour mark. I don't really know if it's 10 hours, 15 hours, or six hours, or longer, you know, like 32 hours. It's all arbitrary, so to say, because there's no complete data to back up the, the prognosis of how long the half-life really is. Now we'll go on, on some side effects of RAD140. The saying is, and I, I believe it's more of a sales thing to promote SARMs, over the use of exogenous testosterone and other testosterone derivatives to say that all SARMs have no side effects. There's no consequences. Um, you get all the pros of what testosterone does, but none of the negatives of what testosterone does. Basically because of the androgenicity being secretly dropped and the anabolic properties only raised. There is side effects to all SARMs due to lack of um, negative feedback to the HPTA, meaning there's no homeostasis of being aromatized into estrogen. So you're going to have a downfall of either testosterone from endogenous testosterone, which subsequently raises estrogen levels through the roof, which is not healthy, or um, the negative feedback being, being missed or being blocked basically because the HPTA access is suppressed through all SARMs. And Back to the RAD140, RAD140 is the most suppressive SARM there is. Lack of aromatization means lack of estrogen, which means a raise of other deleterious issues in the body. You would have to subsequently exogenously add synthetic testosterone with RAD140 to make it more of a therapeutic thing, to, or HRT I should say, 
or um, exogenous estrogen to actually make RAD140 work, which kind of defeats the whole purpose of RAD140 being its sole product being used um, by itself. It, it, it's not going to be able to be used by itself and not have any kind of consequential issues or side effects. Androgenic alopecia, acute telogen aflibium. Also, you get signs of gynecomastia, which is also called man boobs, or that fatty deposit that goes around the nipple. It can crush high density lipoproteins, your HDL, and drop them and raise LDL, low density lipoproteins. It can also cause liver enzyme damage. Also due from suppression of the HPTA axis, the hypothalamus pituitary to sucker axis, you're gonna get an offset of GnRH, which is gonadotropin releasing hormones from, like I said, from the hypothalamus to the anterior pituitary signaling for GnRH to be released through luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone. That is basically boom, suppressed due to the SARM being introduced and hypogonadism systems basically can occur. You can become hypogonadal due to too much threshold of anabolic properties and not enough androgen properties. Like I said, defeating the whole aromatist for um, balance of estrogen and testosterone in the body. But you know, if you want any more questions based on SARMs, basically like this one, or Austrian, which I've done an Austrian video quite a while ago, which is uh, here on my Instagram and, and on my YouTube channel. Again, yeah, follow me on my YouTube as well, uh, at Coach Troy at Tate Fitness. But anyways, like I said, if you have any more questions, please let me know. Contact me at the email below. Follow me on my YouTube. Please take care. Have a great day and talk to you soon. Bye-bye.